Wegener had all of this evidence that uh, he thought helped prove continental drift was occurring. And none of his evidence was actually wrong, um, but his theory was still basically discounted and he was a bit of a laughing stock. And this is because of the mechanism. The mechanism he had for why this was occurring was just not acceptable. And he thought that the continents were moving around the ocean basins because of issues like gravity and tidal bulges. And just the physics of rock and stuff and, and the weight of continents should make it obvious that gravity, you know, pulls things towards the center of the earth. It doesn't move them side to side along it. And it's just kind of a dumb mechanism. Um, unfortunately, this was really sad for Alfred Wegener. The book came out in 1915. People sort of talked about his theory for the next five to ten years. But after that, it was just thrown out, uh, the whole kit and caboodle because the mechanism was so ridiculous. It was actually kind of sad for Wagner, and things did not go well for him after that. Plate tectonics came about as an extension of continental drift and proposed a new mechanism. There are two major reasons why this came out. First, um, well, the obvious one is seafloor features. During World War II, people were running around using sonar a lot, and, and a lot became, the seafloor was studied while looking for sa um, submarines. We'll talk about that in greater detail next. But first, there was a new science that was sort of born um, related to the magnetic field of the Earth. People began to study magnetism in the magnetic field and the ancient magnetic field, aka paleomagnetism, as a real science. And, and this let them understand new and different things about um, rocks and their location, which gave rise to um, plate tectonics. So let's talk about some of that evidence. First of all, let's talk about the magnetic field. Hopefully you remember from physics that a magnetic field occurs whenever you rotate metal. Well, the inner core of the Earth um, spins. It spins sort of around its own pole. Um, and, and it generates a magnetic field because it's iron and nickel and magnetic metals will generate a magnetic field. When you have a compass, um, and a true compass, I don't mean the little dinky ones in, that are like restricted to a plane, where you have a needle that can truly move, one end will point to the north and one end will point to the south, but that's an oversimplification. Not only do they orient themselves north-south, they also orient, and orient themselves towards that area of rotating metal. So if you're off of the equator, the not only does it point north, but it also points into the earth. And the farther, the closer you are to the magnetic poles, the stronger things point into the earth. So that's called magnetic dip, and you can see this in figure 2-7. You can see um, right here that the at the equator we have um, right there, you can see that the needle is parallel to the surface of the Earth. But if you're at the poles, as you move towards the poles rather, it becomes more and more obvious until you get to the actual magnetic north pole and it just points straight into the Earth. And um, you probably did experiments where you lined up um, iron fillings and you could see that, but Magnetic dip becomes really important, and the fact that not only can we see that which way the poles were, but when you look at something that's magnetic, you can see how far it points into the Earth is a function of its latitude, so you can see where it used to be. What this meant was that um, we have liquid rock, and liquid rock contains other magnetic materials, primarily magnetite, which is a form of iron. And while it's a liquid, um, these... Um, particles align themselves to the magnetic field, and they'll point in a certain direction, not just north-south, but also into the Earth along to their magnetic dip. Then, when those um, liquid rocks cool, uh, solidify, that alignment becomes fixed. Now, sometimes, as we now know from um, plate tectonics, those rocks then move from that location. And we can tell where that rock was originally formed because of wh how which way it points to the North Pole, as well as how far into the Earth it points as well. Um, same thing happens with sedimentary rock, except instead of being liquid, um, the, the particles align themselves while they're in solution, and then when the water leaves, they get fixed into place. So this becomes a really strong evidence for paleomagnetism because you will find rocks that point in directions different from their current latitude. And additionally, we're going to talk about polar reversals. Two other pieces of evidence um, for plate tectonics from paleomagnetism is apparent polar wandering, which is kind of a weird idea, but the magnetic pole is not fixed in place. Um, you 
are probably aware, hopefully from naval science and physics, that the magnetic pole and the actual North Pole are not in the same place. The magnetic pole is usually close to the actual North Pole, but it wanders about it, um, and that's what we call polar wandering. Because rocks can get the dip um, as well as the orientation fixed in place, um, they should point to a rock, whether it's on North America or Northern Europe, should point towards the same pole. And remember, we can go back and date rocks. So rocks from the same period should point towards the same spot. Um, but they don't. And what this means is, even when accounting for the, the poles wobbling, that those continents were closer together when we're talking about North America and Northern Europe. And those rocks are pointing to some place that was in between them, but they've since moved apart. So they don't point to the same place. So apparent polar wandering also supports the notion that the continents are moving in directions. Other things that we have to take into account with paleomagnetism is the reversal of the poles. And you can actually see this. This picture is uh, figure 2-11 in the book-ish, depending on which copy of the book you have. And the magnetic poles have reversed periodically back and forth through time. Um, and the way that you can tell this is because you'll look at rock, and, and it's not that the rock is actually different colors. It's that the magnetic banding of the rock is different. So some rocks will point towards north, and other rocks will have... Um, the orientation where it points toward the southern, uh, the south, southern magnetic pole. And this is because they actually flip the orientation, one's positive, one's negative. We've had 170 reversals in the last, basically since um, Pangaea broke up. I mean, uh, since the Atlantic Ocean was halfway done. 76 million years is the number they give in the book. And that's kind of a lot. They switch um, once every 250,000-ish years, but we're actually way overdue for one. And um, our magnetic field is actually weakening. Because of all the biological effects of the magnetic field, people have wondered for quite some time now since paleomagnetism found these reversals, actually what happens when there's no magnetic field for a while. The magnetic field weakens, it flips, and then it starts back up. And nobody is really sure why this happens, and especially not the reversals part. Um, it's something that's still being studied currently. We're actually going to watch that horrible movie, The Core, uh, where they talk about the magnetic field stopping and the wackadoodle things that they think is going to happen. Biologically, um, a bunch of animals use it. The oceanography, we're going to talk about um, green sea turtles. Sea turtles are a species, uh, live in the open ocean, but they must re return to coastal areas to feed and to breed. And some of them are extremely specific about where they must go back. And there's been an issue that shows that, especially green sea turtles, which are very uh, location dependent, that they like travel in a near straight line. People used to think they followed currents or that they followed waves. And um, currents, as you know, migrate a little bit and waves change direction a lot. So they thought that these uh, sea turtles followed these patterns back to where they were born. This is actually not the case. Um, they've used radio tagging and they've seen that green sea turtles move in a damn near straight line. Um, and they think now that it is actually magnetic reception. Now, why would it be important that they can find where they were? Well, when sea turtles initially evolved, um, the distances in the oceans where they were were probably different. Where they fed and where they bred were probably much closer together. Now they're much farther away, so there's an evolutionary pressure for them to become much better at navigating. Um, it's, su it's suspected that there are actual magnetite particles in their head, which give them a sense of magnetic reception. Um, there's, this has been shown again and again in many, many animals. Um, it's been shown in a lot of marine animals, whales, dolphins, a lot of fish. Um, the monarch butterfly has been shown to have it. Um, honeybees, people can even guess if you spin them around in a circle and close and have them close their eyes, they have a better than, uh, you would expect a chance of guessing which way is north. Um, even if they don't consciously know why. Um, and so sea turtles can also do this. They, like any good navigator, they're going to use other things. I, I'm sure you guys have all done, or maybe most of you have tried orienteering. Yes, you use the compass, but you use other things, which way is the sun. Um, maybe you don't smell things too much. But they will use olfactory cues. They will look at, like, um, current, salt waters, fresh water flows, things like that. Um, there was some concern that when we have magnetic field reversals that... Uh, animals would become deeply confused. But these animals have, remember, we have 170 reversals in the last 70 plus million years. 
these animals have existed during that time and have survived these reversals before, so they're likely to survive. Um, so that's kind of it for paleomagnetism. We will talk about um, plate tectonics and the seafloor specifically in the next video.